Hello again. So my name is Jonathan David De La Cruz, and I'm still your lecturer for curriculum development. So we are now at the lecture on instructional cycle, the classroom routine and management. This is just an overview of the lecture and actually not a very, very uh, comprehensive lecture. This focuses more on the application on classroom routines. Okay, so Establish routine. So for classroom, classroom routine and management, it's important that you have to establish your classroom routine at the earlier phase of the academic year or at, of the term or of the semester. This aims to allow you to run your daily lecture smoothly. Okay. And it also helps you to maintain order inside the classroom. It's generally the goal of routine uh, makes you focus in teaching because you spend less time in giving directions and instructions and enables you to explain to the learners what you are expected of them okay so um, do not change your routine at the middle of the sem or at the middle of the term because this might affect your learner. So make sure that the routine is established properly. If you want to make your routine easily followed, you have to allow your learners participate in creating your routine. But simple routines has to be established, okay? And the one that I'm going to show you is by Robert Gagne. It's the events of instructions by Robert Gagne. The steps here, the events here are not actually something that has to be followed step by step, but it's an encouraged flow of lecture in a global standard. This is something that is being followed in a larger scope, uh, in the larger scope. Okay, so number one is gain attention. As teachers, you have actually the power on, on getting the attention of your learners. When you step inside the classroom, make sure that you get the attention. Next is inform your learners of the objectives, specific objectives of the topic. That's when your teacher say, okay, this session or today we're going to talk about this topic. Ngayong araw na to, pag-uusapan natin ang. Those are statements that when the teacher introduces the objective. Recall prior knowledge after introducing the objective. Recall prior knowledge. Um, this is when in our previous discussion, in our former lesson, okay, we talked about, o kaya naman, nung nakaraan, uh, pag uh, klase natin, tinalakay natin ito. And then, during those time, during those period, you're going to seem the last topic to the present topic. Okay? So, that's connecting your previous lesson to your current lesson. When you're able to do that, you present your material. Not the, not literally presenting it, but show on what instructional material are you going to use. Are you going to use a projector and a laptop? Are you going to use a chalk talk method? You're just going to write at the board? No. Uh, that has to be shown. Next is provide guided learning. Um, this may vary depending on the approach or strategy of the teacher. You may start with a probing question. You may start with an activity, no? And then elicit performance. Allow the lear learners perform something wherein you can derive the information or vice versa. You teach and then allow the learners conduct a performance. And then you may also provide your feedback. When you provide feed feedback, that's when some of the information are coming from you. Okay, because sometimes when you conduct activity, you allow the learners identify what has to be generated or derived from that activity. And when you are providing feedback, make sure teachers that you are constructive. That when you provide feedback, it's something that is informational. Okay, there's a difference between a teacher creating a critic and a non-teaching personnel creating a critic. Okay, there's a difference. Make sure that when you critic or when you provide feedback, you sound like a professional teacher. 
and pre-service teachers or education students has to be familiar on providing a proper feedbacking not just saying you don't you did not go, uh, do a good performance you failed to do this you failed to do that no that's not the proper way and there's a different session or different lecture for that next is assess performance that's when you provide a performance that has to be graded and then enhance retention and transfer this is when you actually conduct generalization the generalization can be from your students or from you or you can actually have them do an assignment and provide an activity like uh, write three to one, like three things you learned, two things that you want to know more, and one question that you want to ask your teacher. Something like that. Three to one method. Three to one method of closing your class. Um, that's the events of instructions that Robert Gagne encouraged us to follow. Generally, that's the flow of discussion in almost all your subjects, if you haven't noticed. Okay. It starts with, okay, cla uh, good morning, class. Today, we're going to talk about, and then previously, we talked about, and then the content, and then at the closing, there's a three-to-one method or as assignment or generalization. Okay. That may vary depending on the strategy of the teacher. But the next thing that I'm going to show you is the patterns that you should avoid when you are in instruction. These are patterns to avoid uh, in instructions. This is by Jacob Kunin. So Hong Yung, uh, instructions, events of instructions by Robert Gagne. Yun yung susundan natin pag tayo nagkaklase. Ito naman ang mga dapat nating iwasan. So we have flip-flop. Teacher terminates one activity, begin, uh, begins another, then returns to the original activity. Example, nagtuturo si teacher. Habang nagtuturo si teacher, pinatawag sa meeting. Nagpa-activity kahit mamaya pa dapat yung activity. Pagkabalik niya, nag-lecture siya ulit. Flip-flop yon, Kasi gumaganon-ganon siya. At any cost, huwag kayo mag-flip-flop. Okay, pabalik-balik. Next, overdwelling. Teacher spends more time than is necessary to correct an infraction of classroom rule. Madaming cases ng overdwelling. This is when, number one, teacher gets mad. Dahil may mali kayong ginawa ganyan, nagalit na siya buong session. Number one, overdwelling sa anger ni teacher. Bakit kayo ganyan? Ganito ganyan. Number two, okay, these are scenarios. okay. Number two, Dahil favorite ni teacher yung topic, okay? Dahil favorite ni teacher yung topic, there's a certain part sa topic na favorite ni teacher. While doing the lecture, he or she enjoyed that part at doon na siya lumalim ng lumalim ng discussion dahil favorite part niya yun. Number three, nag-lecture si teacher, tanong yung student. Nagtanong din yung isa. Nagtanong din yung isa related dun sa tanong ng isang student. At tanong ng tanong ng tanong until doon na umikot ang lecture. Overdwelling yon Number four, madami pang iba. There are different ways for a teacher to overdwell. Do not overdwell. Take note that you have a classroom objective, a class objective for that day, and you have to attain that. In a lesson plan, there's a different session for lesson planning. Lesson planning, you have a goal. You can take the path A, that's the ideal one. You can deviate B or C or D. As long as the objective is attained, it's okay. But if you overdwell in one part of the topic, definitely you're not going to hit the objective that day. Number three, fragmentation. Teacher breaks direction into choppy steps instead of fluid unit. In a certain classroom environment, the lecture has to be seamless. In short, when the teacher says, this day we're going to talk about these three objectives, seamless means at the end of the session, ala, natapos lahat ni sir yun? Natapos lahat ni ma'am yun? That's seamlessness of instruction. And we want that kind of instructions. Okay? Number four, thrust. Teacher interrupts classroom momentum into random unrelated comments. Thrust. 
Lagi ito nangyayari. Ito yung nagle-lecture si teacher. Habang nagle-lecture si teacher, sumilip sa buhay niya hanggang naging kwento na ng buhay niya yung lecture. Okay? This happens many times. Or, napunta sa ibang topic, nag-stay na dun sa topic na yon. Take note again, we will all go back to your learning objective. You have a lesson objective that day that you have to attain. That's your mission to deliver it properly that day. If you overdwell, you flip-flop, overdwell, fragment, thrust, definitely you're not going to hit that objective. Okay? Especially sa thrust, madami dito. It's okay, no, teachers, to relate your life to the topic if it's relatable. Just a little bit. No? Because experiences are great teachers and learners as well. Great teaching and learning experiences. You can share that. But do not stay there. Mahirap na kapag nag-thrust ka na doon, nag-overdwell ka pa doon sa buhay mo. Hanggang sa sumunod na session, continuous ng life story mo. Okay? Ayaw natin ng ganun. Uh, next is dangle or dangling. Teacher begins a thought then leaves it hanging com- without completion. Ito yung nangiiwan sa ere. Nagtanong si teacher ng tanong. Di niya sinagot. Hanggang nag-end na yung klase. Nagtanong si student, sabi ng teacher, I look into it, I'll get back to you on that. Natapos na ang buong quarter, hindi niya nasagot yung tanong ng bata. Teachers, it's okay to admit that you do not know the answer. Okay? Considerable yun. Kasi again, in the 21st century education, we are facilitators of knowledge. We are not the sole source of knowledge anymore. Okay? Kasi previously, we are the sole source of knowledge of the community. Like pag sinabi ni Sir, sinabi ng teacher, sinabi ng great philosopher Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, no? the community would definitely believe. But in the 21st century education, it's okay to admit that we do not know everything. Because again, the information is at the tip of the fingers of the people. Okay? So, that's it. Those are the three things that I want you to... Uh, those are the three major things that I want you to understand. Establish routine is very important. The classroom instruction events by Robert Gagne. Please review on that. Follow. Again, it's prescribed. It's an encouraged flow. And then Jacob Kunin's patterns to avoid. Do not flip-flop. Okay? Jump ng lesson, activity lesson. Do not overdwell. Okay? Make sure. Be vigilant. Baka mamaya sinasadya na ng mga sadyante magtanong para hindi umabot sa quiz. Overdwelling. Fragmentation. Thrust. This is the most common when teachers starts to vent out their life to their students. Thrust yun. And tangling. Okay? So those are the important things. Establish routine. Follow the prescription of Robert Gagne, uh, events of instructions, and avoid the patterns of instruction set by Jacob Kunin. And that would be all. Thank you very much for listening for this session. Thank you and God bless po.